Jerry Brown here with Jerry Brown Travels. Lori here. Well, this is a live presentation, but it really isn't live. <laughs> what we're going to do this week is people have put in requests. They want a little information about our backstory, how we met, uh, how, how many years did we live in Hawaii, uh, when did we retire, do we have children, do we have grandchildren, and so on. We're going to go through here. Now, when I say it's a live presentation, our internet does not handle live and so we're going to make this like it is live and so we're going to go through all the questions that people ask and we're going to answer them here today so let's go into this here so let's start off with uh Lori, why don't you start off with your story you know growing up in cambodia and then we'll start moving on as we uh, evolve in our relationship okay um well I grew up, I was born and raised in Cambodia, and um, when I was in a childhood, in my family, my dad doesn't want a girl to go to school, and then only the boy can go to school, and then in the whole house, there are only one brother to go to school, but I'm, you know, it's about six or seven years old, I want to go to school, and my dad was, don't want me to go to school at all. So I still sneak it out and then he find out I go to school and then he beat me every day to stop me to go to school. But I still sneak it out and go anyway. So finally he couldn't stop me, but he wouldn't pay my uh, school tuition or my school supply. I had to earn my own money to, to, to pay for that. So make a long story to be short. So that is how I grew up and my life. <laughs> yeah, and so Lori uh, grew up in a very poor village in Cambodia uh, and uh, bamboo house and stuff like that. But, uh, and you were a rice farmer. Yeah, I work in the farm a lot, you know, with the rice farm and then co a little bit of the corn and a sweet potato. But, you know, but the main, the main is the rice. Right. So uh, Lori actually at 12 years old had to uh, take over the responsibility of running the farm mm -hmm. and uh, because her father was an alcoholic. Yeah, well, my, after my mom died, my father was turned to be the alcoholic and then he... So Lori ended up, I can say, having to uh, mm -hmm. uh, be the responsible one and manage the farm and take care of the family in that regard at a very mm -hmm. young age. But mm -hmm. then also... You were what? How old were you when the communists came in and took over the country? Well, it's I not exactly know how old I am, but in 1975, the communists take over the country, and then you know, and uh, it everybody was work for the government. We were caught 18 hours a day, so um, we are very very hard work, and not enough food to eat. Sorry, I talk a little bit fast because if I talk slow, I forget. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, so, and then if I was thinking in my mind, the kid no education at all, and um, if I have a chance, I can, you know, just try to get out from the country to get the kid education because I didn't have my good education myself. So I want the kid to have education. So I thinking in my mind, so we can escape out from Cambodia. Um, the sooner, if I can, uh, finally, so 1979 and the Vietnamese will come over and fight with the Khmer Rouge. And that time I have a chance to escape out from the country. This time I have two kids, so I decide to let's go. So the way I go, because um, if I leave in Cambodia, I lost everything. I didn't have house, I didn't have land, I didn't have anything. So I think if I go to other country, I might start all over again. And my hope is to take my kid to have education. Okay, good, thanks. Well, let me go into my backstory a little bit about it. I was raised in California, in Southern California. Uh, my family, my mother raised five of us kids. I was the youngest. My father died when I was five. Um, I got married at 19, actually had a kid at 19. Mm -hmm. So we're 19 years old, difference between us. And uh, both, the, and then a daughter and another daughter. Mm -hmm. And 
The sad thing was that my 13-year-old daughter passed away at 13 years old. And uh, then after about seven years of being single, I remarried. And uh, that marriage lasted five years. And uh, that wasn't working for us. And then I eventually uh, decided I wanted to move to Hawaii. And why I wanted to move to Hawaii, to be very honest with you, very honest with you, is that I was, I don't mean to offend anybody, but I was sort of wanting an, a different relationship. I wanted a relationship with an Asian. Uh, and I thought that would be, a, you know, a neat thing to, to experience. And so I went over to Hawaii, uh, me and a partner, we were old surfer buddies, and, uh, and we uh, went over to Hawaii, and we started a business, and uh, uh, I found Lori, and <laughs> we met, and, uh, and so and it was interesting when we met, because Lori had been married one time before, mm -hmm. and she had, in between, after that, she had a relationship that didn't go so well with the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. So we had that same history of being, you know, having two relationships that didn't work very well. <laughs> And, and I said to her, I says, I want to marry an Asian. And she said to me, she says, I don't want to be married to, a, to an Asian anymore. I want to look for a, uh, a, a, a foreigner, you know, something yeah, like that. Yeah, uh, let me see. Well, after I had that two relationship, it doesn't go very good. And then I was thinking, well, I'm not going to marry, remarry it again. If I'm going to be married, it's not going to be Asian. It has to be Caucasian or the other countries, not going to be Asian at all. Yeah. Had to be European. <laughs> yeah. So so we started dating, but it was real interesting how clear Lori got right away. Mm -hmm. And uh, she says to me, Jerry, I mean, this may be our third date, right? Mm -hmm. She says, Jerry, I don't smoke. I says, I don't smoke either. She says, I don't drink. And I says, I don't drink either. She says, I don't eat meat. I don't eat meat. And, uh, and that, so she got real clear uh, on that. And then the next one, what I say? <laughs> what did you say? I forgot. I, said, I cannot have any children. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I didn't want any more children. So <laughs> she said, I don't smoke, I don't drink, and I don't eat meat, and I can't have children. Great. The relationship was, you know, starting on a good footing on like that. And, uh, but it's been interesting over the years. We've been very compatible on our goals of, so as an example, I told Lori right away, I says, when I get to retirement age, I want to travel. And even before that, I want to travel. Mm -hmm. And you said? Me too. <laughs> she wants to travel with me. And so she said she wanted to see the world. I wanted to see the world. And so uh, about every five years, I'd bring up the subject. I still want to travel when I get, you know, to retirement. And, and she, I say, me too. <laughs> yeah, and so, okay, in five years. So that goes into another question that somebody has asked us. How long have we been together? Well, he, we have been together 33 years now. Cambodian tradition, if you're going to move into the man, if you didn't get married, then you're not a good girl at all. It doesn't matter you widow or you divorce or you're single. You know, you have to do the tradition married first. Well, we end up to marry each other three times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to each other. To each hey, other. Yeah, we love it. Now, uh, so then we're, 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 we're realizing we're compatible. We, we were on the same page with how to raise children. Uh, how, what about money? Are we going to save money? How are we going to do? One of the big things that happens, I know, maybe you know this or maybe you don't, but when you are in a relationship with an Asian, and you that are understand this, a lot of times they want to send money back home to their family. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I asked her about that. I says, are you planning on sending money back home to your family? And she said, no, because I don't have any family back home. You know, so I don't need to do that. I says. Oh. I, I say, well, well, I say, well, you know, I have to support myself first. Yeah, that's right. And the other question people ask, uh, talking about this topic, is grandchildren. Uh, Jerry has three grandchildren and have five great grandchildren. He has two children. He has three, but one passed away, and I have three and have one passed away, and he have two bo two two girl and one boy, and then I have one girl and two boy. So 
one of my boys will pass away and one of his girls will pass away. So now we have two and two. Well, uh, those are sad times. You know, we don't mm -hmm. want to be light about them. They were difficult times. Mm -hmm. But we... Uh, well, the life is not fair, but we do what we can. Yeah. So we have to get out when we was fall down to the ground and then get into the mud. We have to get up and clean the mud out and stand up and run it again. Yeah, and I think there again, that's sort of what well, we've been on the same page is that even through adversities, be able to come back up and come back, you know, and uh, and keep going. Now, uh, occupation-wise, people want to know is, uh, uh, well, Lori, you go first. Well, my first job when I come into Hawaii, I'm be a seam dress. I work eight hours at the company, it's called Silver Needle, Silver, ne Silver Needle. So it's a seam dress, so I learn as I go. And finally, so I take some piece home, work at home for extra money. And back then I was under welfare, the government was helping me because I'm a, a divorce and I have you know, three children to take care. I'm a single mom and I feel so frustration because my life is not go smooth, but you know, to, to be so wise, it's much better than I live in a communist, you know, regime. And then I've, I feel okay. I feel much, much better. I can make the money and I can pay my bill, but I barely pay my bill. I pay my bill month to month. And, um, when I meet Jerry, and Jerry said, this job is, is not so good for you. You work so hard, you didn't make enough money. You still under the welfare. So he dis decided to say, um, why don't you change your um, job? I said, oh, wow, I don't know what to do. I didn't have any education. And Jerry said, well, my sister is a house cleaning. She make pretty good money to raise her children. And, uh, and then she was single mom. I said, hmm, hmm somebody can do it I can do it so and then I start to looking for the house cleaning job so I, I get work for I call um, American made in Hawaii so I work for them and then I learned the technique from them and thank you for American made to teach me how to do it but this thing is depend on your mind don't be a duck be a chicken <laughs> <Let> me, <laughs> that's I learned from my dad <laughs> let, let, I want Lori to clarify don't be a duck this is this is wisdom from her father handing it down to her his daughter. Don't be a duck, but be a chicken. Now explain that. Well, it's duck because the duck in the nature duck is you eat there, you poop there, you sleep there. And to be the chicken, the chicken you can eat in the ground, you can go around and you know and then find your food. But when you sleep, you sleep on a tree or you sleep in the uh, uh, a chicken house. Chicken in Cambodia is a natural. <laughs> No, if we don't feed the chicken, they can go and eat something else, and then, but every night they come back home and sleep on the tree. Yeah. Okay, so let me see if I can clarify that a little bit. <laughs> Is don't be a duck, be a chicken. Okay, so the duck, it, it's, it's, it's in the mud, okay? It lives in the mud. It, it eats in the mud. It l sleeps in the mud, and it also craps in the mud. So the father says, be a chicken, fly up in the tree and look around. In other words, expand your vision for your life. You know, mm -hmm. don't be stuck. You know, mm -hmm. look at a better life for yourself. Remember, mm -hmm. this is a Cambodia father giving his daughter this basic folk, uh, uh, we call it, uh, story and, mm -hmm. and, and as an example. So Lori definitely learned and she'd been a chicken because she's been looking all of her life, she's always done great and uh, done better and better. And there again, I think we've been on the same page with that. Mm -hmm. Our personalities are that we bounce back quickly as we can and we support each other when we're down. Mm -hmm. Say, if I'm down, she supports me in my, say, loneliness or my sadness, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and vice versa. So we try to be supportive of each other, and that's very important. Mm -hmm. But let's move on here. Uh, yeah. Let's see, what else haven't we talked about? Let me check my notes, okay? I'm gonna duck away here. You don't expect me to remember all these things offhand. Let me just check them. <laughs> In my business, it was a landscape architectural business. Me and a partner came over to Hawaii. 
and we uh, uh, started with basically twelve hundred dollars each, and uh, to start this business, and uh, we both wanted to marry Asian women, and so mm -hmm. we both did that, and uh, and I'll tell you, it's interesting about being married to an Asian when. We first got together and uh, living together, and uh, I came home one day, and man, the house, it reeked. I mean, it was, ah, it was a terrible smell, terrible. I went yeah. around and I opened up all the windows. I got incense, I lot incense in the house, and then I walked away outside, and I thought, well, Jerry, you wanted to marry an Asian. This is part of the deal, so don't complain. You know what I mean? Let her cook the foods that she likes and stuff like that. Another question that somebody has asked, how old were we when we stopped working? Uh, I was 60 years old, and uh, just prior to that, about a year before, I went to Lori and I said, Lori, now Lori is seven years younger than I am, so uh, she's 52 at that point, and I says, Lori, I'm going to want to retire. I'm going to retire in one more year. Mm -hmm. And I says, remember, we talked about traveling, that I want to travel, and that, and, uh, and, and, and I said to you, well, how do you feel about that, Lori? And what was your reply? Well, when I retire, I don't think I can retire it because I'm, you know, love my work. I still love my job at work and make pretty good money. And then what did you say? Well, then I said, well, I'm going to retire and I'm going to travel. And if you want to keep your business, your house cleaning business, uh, you can do that. I'll go travel and then I'll maybe be gone a month or six weeks and I'll be back. And she goes, No, I go too. I wouldn't let you go traveling alone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so what we end up doing is... So what we and I have been doing, Jerry put my business in for sale. It's only two days I sell my business, my house cleaning business. I give them with um, the bonus with the employee, they take everything and then all my equipment for the house cleaning. So we sold in two days what the price we asking for. <laughs> yeah, and so and I had already made an arrangements that I was going to sell my half of my company to my business partner, mm -hmm. and we did that. So then we needed to sell, because now we're going to retire. We had a year, you know, going mm -hmm. forward to plan for this. We needed to sell our house. Mm -hmm. And that was hard on Lori, huh, Lori? Yeah, because the Asian way, you know, when you get your property, you don't want to sell it out. You want to keep it. You know, you want to keep it for yourself. You want to keep, when you retire, you want to keep it for your children after you pass away. So I said, oh no, it's my first house. Now I have to sell it. I don't want to sign. I've been crying. And well, finally, I was thinking, well, it could be good if we go to, you know, it's just all in my head by myself. It'll be good when you're traveling, you don't have anything to think about on the back here. So, and then I said, oh, I trust his idea. Well, also, we needed the money. We needed the money to be able to, to mm -hmm. do this. We're retiring early. It's mm -hmm. going to be two, two and a half years before I'm going to be able to collect Social Security. Mm -hmm. And Lori is seven years younger, so she's way out in that mm -hmm. plan of, uh, of retiring. So we did sell the house. We had an estate sale. Mm -hmm. We sold all of our furniture. Mm -hmm. We did have a beautiful home. It was not an expensive home, but it was a beautiful home. And uh, we... Uh, so here we go, we said, okay, we're ready to, to retire. So we get on the big bird, we get on the plane, and we decide that where are we gonna go? Well, we had already decided. Mm -hmm. We were gonna go start our retirement of going to uh, uh, Sri, no, no, we were going, no, we were going to uh, uh, Malaysia, uh, India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, mm -hmm. and, then, and then carry on, then we were gonna go to like Borneo, that was Indonesia, Bali, that was yeah. in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And then we were going to work our way up uh, to, let's say, the Philippines and then mm -hmm. Cambodia, Laos. Mm -hmm. Well, we go to all that, um, you know, most mostly the Southeast Asia because cheaper than, you know, and then traveling in Europe. But yeah. I, I, I love it. Um, and then we're looking some place to retire too. Yeah, so as we were looking like that in the back of our mind, because we didn't own anything now, we were basically homeless, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, we're keeping our eye out for where we felt comfortable to retire. 
Uh, where did they have proper medical? Where did they have good weather? Mm -hmm. You know, where, where can we actually live and get a visa and all this stuff? Yeah. So as we're traveling through all the countries, we've been to 37 countries at this point. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here we come back after, you know, that, those years of traveling. We actually bought a motor home mm -hmm. in the United States. We drove it for a year and a half and lived in it. And we had all the national parks. Mm -hmm. Then what happened? What happened was, bang, we get a call from our uh, financial advisor and he says, Jerry, have you looked at your portfolio? Have you looked at what you have uh, you know, to retire and your money? And I said, no. And he says, you better look at that. And so I did and I called him up and I says, what do you, you know, he says, you dropped 50%. Mm -hmm. You are down. I mm -hmm. said, what should we do? We're scared. Mm -hmm. And he says, park that motorhome or sell it and f go find a place that you can basically live on cheaper. as cheap money as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. And so we decided we were going to put the motor home in storage mm -hmm. and we'd come down into Mexico. Mm -hmm. We drove a car, we had it packed with you know, mm -hmm. everything, uh, all of our clothes and bedding and everything ready mm -hmm. to uh, have an adventure in Mexico. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were in survival mode and, and I had traveled through Mexico extensively over the years and I lived here 10 months, one time, six months, another, mm -hmm. and I realized how cheap it could be. So we came down and so eventually pick it up from your story of that. Well, you know, I, when he said to Mexico, I said, well, Mexico, I'm not even know Mexico existed. Now I'm living in Mexico. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, when the uh, portfolio was dropped to 50% like that, I was so worried, I was so scared, my hair would drop off, would fall off like crazy, and then, you know, but even, eventually it's growing back, but it's not the same like before, my hair was still thin, so I was so worried, and then finally I said, okay, let's go to Mexico and check it out. So we came to Mexico, and then we check it out, and then, so from now on, you know, because we've been traveling in Southeast Asia and then looking for the weather, you know, to leave it, I can't go back to live in Cambodia. Too hot. It was too hot for me yeah. because I've and been- and too far. And then uh, one thing is too far, it's not that problem, but it's too hot. The weather is very, very hot for me because I've been living in United States for so long Then I live in Cambodia when I try to go back to live back there in even Thai or, you know, Lao, you know, Southeast Asia, anywhere, it was too hot for me, I can't live there. So when we come to Mexico, wow, I fall in love with the weather here. And then, then and the people here, it's just like Cambodia. Yeah. For one thing, I was frustrated with the food because I can eat Mexican food, but it's not every day. You know, how you like your own food, you know, you always want to eat your own food, you yeah. know and uh, uh, the other kind of the food once in a while be okay so and well i found out some asian friend they live here back then you know in 2008 2009 mm -hmm. and a lot of asian live in mexico and in hee uh, hee lake thai you know and so we went to the asian store it's double price and what i pay in united states but oh well they have it here so i start to feel comfortable yeah and so we decided uh, after being here in the Lake Chapala area, mm -hmm. we started off by being here a month. Remember, we were only gonna come down for six months because mm -hmm. that's all we could get a, a tourist card for. Mm -hmm. So we ended up staying here three months. We really liked it. And then we started our journey. We traveled all through Mexico. And as mm -hmm. we were sort of rounding up our end of our uh, time in Mexico, I said, you know, that place I he is sort of special. Let's go back, sell the motorhome, and uh, come back. And that's what we did. We sell mm -hmm. the motorhome, and then we came back to Mexico. Mm -hmm. And that's when we set up a home base here. Yeah. So, okay. getting established here in the Ahi area, we didn't buy a home. No, we didn't buy a home. Uh, we actually rented. We rented for like, how many years? 10 years. 10 years, maybe 11 years we rented. Mm -hmm. and, oh. yeah, until we did finally buy a home. And then that home was gonna be a, we rented it out so mm -hmm. we could exchange the rent from that, from a place that we were renting mm -hmm. and that. But then 
Eventually, we decided that we would downsize because we needed to save more money. We, mm -hmm. were, we needed to conserve our money. So we uh, moved into our house, and maybe you've seen a video on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so that's, you know, what we've done. Over the years, we've always tried to live within our means, and that's really important. Mm -hmm. uh, looking back, you know, on people will ask us, say, well, you're really rich. You know, in a lot of ways, yes, we are. And especially in which way, Lori? We're rich in our heart. <laughs> yeah, we're rich in our heart, and, and that's it. But when we were really on the same page of saving, we got really you know, disciplined. Hey, if we want to retire you know, at the timeline that we wanted, we needed to really be serious about working and saving our money. We would end up working like anywhere from 60 to 80 hours a week consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, I had my uh, landscape architectural firm. I had 60 employees at this time. Mm -hmm. We started off with just my partner and I, and we built it up to 60 employees. Mm -hmm. A lot of responsibilities there. Uh, and so, Lori, your house cleaning business. Yeah, my house cleaning business, I end up to working like 10, 12 hours a day, you know, and I work on a weekend too sometimes. But uh, mostly, I save the weekend for be the family, you know, be together with family. And I work so hard from seven to seven every day, you know, sometime from eight to 12 uh, to 10 o'clock at night. So I, the worker who come to work for me, I have to interview them. You have to be reflexible because this job is not fixed hour. Sometime, you have to work overtime, but when you work overtime, I will pay you hour, uh, hour and a half. That's what you say? Yeah. Time and a half. Time and a half. Time and a half. So they're happy with that. So we work from, you know, 8 o'clock until 10 o'clock at night. So we work so hard. We save. We keep saving, saving the money. So by the time we get here, we don't lose the <laughs> Sorry, I just can't keep my hands off of her. Uh, yeah, so we did work a lot of hours. But the other thing that we did, we disciplined our safe self to mm -hmm. save, 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 save. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, remember, we don't have any uh, education or anything like that. Mm -hmm. All we are is just a couple high school kids, you know, uh, education-wise. But uh, we, we put it up a point to save at least 20% of our income. Mm -hmm. So we watched ourselves and what we spent. So that was the thing. So people say, well, you're really rich. Mm -hmm. Well, we were disciplined and we did the things that it, what it took. We did, we cut back on spending, you know, a lot of stuff for ourselves so we could retire early. And that was our goal. But we were, again, still on the same page in that direction. Yeah, I even saving like the money you put the money for the food, you know, so to buy the household use. I even saved that 20% from that one too. And Jerry said, why you have to save that if nothing? But by the end of the year, you know, I saved that 20% from the food budget and the household budget. We can save up to buy the airline ticket to go to traveling. <laughs> yeah, thank you, I mean, that was good. Yeah, she is a good saver too. Yeah. So another way that we downsized, we did sell all of our properties in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, that we were fortunate. We were able to buy uh, homes that we have bought at the mm -hmm. low end of the market, and we were able to sell them at the high end of the market. Mm -hmm. It just worked that way. It wasn't like, you know, we were, you know, had anything, you know, up here that uh, guided us, or maybe that we did have something that was here that guided us, mm -hmm. but uh, we were able to sell. And so we did make some profits on those investments that we did, but we had saved money and saved and saved. So we did have the money to uh, in, um, invest it and we did invest it. So we were responsible on how to invest. Mm -hmm. uh, I, owe, I checked in, I, I read about it. I took courses in night school on how to invest. Mm -hmm. I, I had a financial advisor did the things that needed to be done mm -hmm. to to be able to retire early mm -hmm. and so and again by watching what we spend and where we spend it mm -hmm. so by us moving to another country that is lower overhead mm -hmm. then again it makes it easier to retire we don't live in Hawaii anymore that's mm -hmm. too expensive and so uh, Mexico meets our needs financially and sociably and a lot of other reasons. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So no more properties in the United States. We only have the one home here in Mexico. Yeah, that's the way we save our money. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you want to read my life story, you want to know me more, you can read my book, Don't Lose Hope by Winsock. My former name is Winsock, and then later on, I changed to be Lori Brown and changed to be, no, I changed to be Lori Winsock Brown. Mm -hmm. Now I be Lori Winsock Brown. But the book is Windsock, it know my Windsock is a true story. And then also on July 9, I will be the guest speaking at LCS Lakeside. So if you want to come to support me, I mean support, I mean um, to listen to my story. <laughs> I'll be happy, you'll be happy. I will be welcome you and happy to see you, to meet you. Now with Lori's book uh, mm -hmm. titled Don't Lose Hope, and if you would like to order it, it is on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And a uh, couple of things on that is that the title again is Don't Lose Hope, and then it's Vin Sock, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll come up. Uh, the, all the proceeds that are raised from Lori's book will go to the United Food Bank that distributes in all the refugee camps throughout the world. Now you have to remember, Lori is a refugee, coming from Cambodia and the war of Vietnam and Cambodia and that. Uh, and so she was uh, uh, escaped the country. And so uh, that's the reason she's written the book. And it's not a book of uh, victim. She's not a victim in the book. You're not gonna feel that. But it's a, a, book, a book of encouragement and enlightenment that you don't lose hope. Mm -hmm. Like Lori didn't lose hope being in you know concentration camp, you know, eating rats, eating lizards, eating centipedes, I mean, just filthy, dirty, you know, environment. But she didn't lose hope, escaped the country with her two children, walked out, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, if you want to buy that book, Amazon does have it, and also get the uh, ebook, one, it's cheaper, and also you'll get more information, because there's links in there mm -hmm. that will, uh, you can touch on the links and it'll expand the story and show you pictures and stuff like that that they can't put in the book. So if uh yeah so. yeah okay one thing i want to say i thank you to beth brazil and then she the one to help mm -hmm. me to write this book before to get this happen i asked four or five people and they always say my story is very short it can't be in magazine or yeah. can be in a uh, letter but i want to be the book i want to be the book to be member of my story so i don't think my book gonna be in public until Beth was thinking about to put this book in the public. It's a true story. So right away, I get five stars. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, Beth is, is actually the one, the co-writer with yeah. Lori. And also, uh, uh, if you do get the book and uh, mm -hmm. make a, a review, the promoter says to make a review, that'll help the sale, that'll help raise more money for the food bank. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, well, next Friday, I have an exciting video for you. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about more of our backstory. Some of the questions you asked, I didn't get a time to answer them. And some of them didn't have anything to do with our story. But you had questions. And I do want to get back and answer them for you. So stay tuned for that next Friday. Could you do us a favor and just put a like. If you like this video and any of our videos going forward, just like them. It gets confusing with people when they say subscribe because they think it is something you have to pay for, like a mm -hmm. subscription to a magazine. But actually, YouTube doesn't work that way. They are free, but you have to have a Gmail account to open up, you know, to be able to subscribe. So if you just hit that little like button, it'll take you, right now, it'll take you two seconds and, and you've liked it. That'll help us and uh, it'll promote our channel and we appreciate that and also ring that little notification bell. And every time we produce a video, which is every Friday at 5 p.m. California time, we'll send you a notice and tell you that a video was popped up. And so, but thank you for everyone that contributed to all the questions and, and asked. And I hope we were able to answer them and on our backstory. So thank you. Thank you very much.